All right, back again on the CA Podcast, week 10 in the books. Uh, what a week it was. Uh, a couple of the matchups on Monday night were uh, down to the wire. Uh, I know Bootsy did not get what he needed uh, from Dwayne Bowe to beat Oaks. Uh, Smith ended up uh, locking up total points to no one's surprise. Um, Ariel ended up beating Deutsch, uh, getting what he needed from Mike Wallace and the Steelers D in a big time comeback. Um, so you know, I I remember vividly being in Fat Poor, watch you know watching Ariel's miserable team. I was sitting at the same table as him, and we all just uh, you know. We're just stupefied at how terrible they were playing. But the fact that he was able to come back and get a win is big. Uh, Obviously, certainly hurts Deutsch's chances. Um, Speaking of chances, this week on the podcast, we're going to do kind of a breakdown. Uh, We're sort of entering the stretch run here, uh, not only in the clown race, but also in the division races as well. So uh, looking at clown, I mean, really, it's kind of a two-man race. Uh, It's basically Justin and Plotzker. Deutsch has seven wins, uh, but he's got a serious total points edge over Plotzker. So, you know, Justin has two less wins, uh, virtually the same amount of points. It's really up to those two guys at this point, unless, um, you know, both of them go on winning streaks and somebody just loses out. So it's certainly nothing is mathematically over, but it looks to be that those are going to be our two clown candidates. Um, If you look at their schedules, they actually play each other twice down the stretch, which is pretty exciting. That should make for uh, some pretty good fantasy football. Um, if you look at their opponents, uh, Justin does uh, play a, a slightly tougher schedule. His remaining opponents, Oaks, Brian, Billy, Smith, Ari Allen, Denenberg, um, have a combined record of 67 and 53, whereas Plasker's remaining opponents, Ben, Smith, Kraus, myself, Denenberg, and Oaks, have a record of 65 and 55. So really a slight edge, really not too discernible. Um, you know, Most importantly, the teams play each other. Justin and Plasker play each other. Uh, twice, including a matchup in week 14. So if Justin can play a little bit of catch-up, uh, could be headed for a pretty serious clown bowl. Um, this one's really too close to call at this point. All right, and then looking in, uh, at each division, um, starting with the uh, Lane Bryant division, uh, Plasker is kind of out of it, as I just mentioned, but the rest of it is sort of wide open. Uh, currently, Oaks and I are tied for first. Um, I have a marginal total points edge of about 10. Uh, Krause is one game back behind both of us, but also trailed my total points lead by more than 70. So, you know, this means he'll kind of have to pass me up on wins most likely. Um, Oaks is kind of the true outlier here as he's sort of managed to put together a good campaign uh, with Brandon Whedon and Ryan Tannehill as his QBs. Uh, He's got Jake Locker coming back, so that might give him a little boost. But, you know, we're all sort of waiting for him to regress. Uh, You know, it hasn't happened yet, so who knows? Maybe Oaks is able to kind of compete here down the stretch run. Uh, I'm hoping his downturn starts this week. Uh, Meanwhile, Krause took a pretty serious hit last night when Big Big Ben Roethlisberger uh, sprained his shoulder. Um, You know, even if Ben can come back for the Steelers, uh, you know, he's basically fantasy irrelevant as there's really only – four weeks left in the fantasy season, you know, Ben would need to make a pretty speedy recovery to, uh, you know, help out Krause's chances of winning the division. So uh, Phillip Rivers just kind of continues to turn it over at a pretty incredible rate. Uh, Michael Turner has kind of slowed down. Uh, Jay Cutler's injury is bad news for Brandon Marshall. So things aren't looking so hot for Krause. Obviously, I definitely would not rule him out quite yet. Um, You know, he's definitely going to be competing down the stretch. Uh, My team, meanwhile, is in pretty solid shape. Cutler's hurt, uh, but, you know, he's been relegated to my bench anyways because of the impressive play of Andrew Luck. Uh, I, you know, I have to suffer through Marshawn Lynch's buy this week, and, you know, it's starting to look like my auction dollar acquisition of Darren McFadden. Uh, it was pretty stupid. You know, McFadden's injury uh, is not so good for my chances. Um, you know, I spent big on Marcel Reese's backup, so hopefully I can suffer through that. But uh, regardless, my receivers keep on producing. Um, I do feel pretty good about my chances to win the division. All right, next division up, looking at the Schindler's division. Um, this division is really, you know, definitely the most entertaining. Uh, it features the odds-on favorite for Clown, Justin, uh, two big-time trade deadline buyers in Ariel and Brian Deutsch, and a team who has maintained the best record in, this, in the league all season, Denenberg. Um, you know, it's useless to talk about how these teams uh, got to the records and points they're at right now. Their rosters have been altered more than Liberace's boyfriend's face. I mean, it's just totally different from how they were when they started the season. Uh, you know, Justin's obviously out of the division race, as mentioned in the clown watch. Uh, Brian kind of mortgaged, mortgaged 2013 to buy a championship. Uh, I'd say things haven't really turned out the way he planned. I mean, he sits right now at 7-13. and 13. He's a full seven games behind the division leader. Um, it should be noted that we decide the wild card team based on total points. So Brian still is in the thick of the points race. Um, you know, really at this point I would say it would pretty much be a miracle for him to win the division. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, but, you know, he's definitely in it for the uh, for the wild card. 
Um, you know, if D uh, continues to sneak by, uh, Ariel, who leads the league in total points, would obviously claim the wild card spot in that scenario. So uh, I don't know. It's it's a little bit uh, up in the air. Um, you know, if you look at Denenberg's team, with really with the exception of Gronkowski, Denenberg doesn't appear to have a top five player at any position. Um, in fact, on paper, his team kind of sucks. But, you know, he's really been a true gamer. He's gotten exactly what he needed this year from Flacco and Romo, uh, Jamal Charles, Malcolm Floyd, his boy Lance Moore. Uh, you know, Deberg still has games against Ariel and Deutsch down the stretch, but he also plays both Justin and Plotzker. So, I don't know, kind of like the 2001 Bears, I think D is uh, destined to win his division on pure luck uh, and then get bounced from round one of the playoffs, which actually I think would be a pretty successful season for him. Um, it's sort of, you know, also looking at it, it's, it's my assertion that Ariel is going to win the wild card in that scenario. Um, all right, finally, looking at the uh, newly named uh, MAM, the Middle American Miniature Maniacs. Uh, this group is uh, parody in a nutshell, really. I mean, Bad Luck Billy is in last place, but he has more total points than the first place team, Bootsy. He only trails by one game. Smith and Billy are 10 and 10. Bootsy and Ben are 11 and 9. Uh, Bootsy, Smith, and Billy are all within about 40 total points of one another. Uh, only Ben really has a true uh, disadvantage in total points. So, you know, Bootsy's really, he's been in the lead most of the year uh, despite a rather unimpressive roster. Um, Stafford has been rounding into form. Vincent Jackson's probably been Bootsy's most reliable player. Uh, Bootsy still has to play me twice as well as Ariel and Kraus. Um, starting next week, he plays one division and one non-division game each week. So, really, he only needs to go 3-3 three and three in those matchups to clinch things. Uh, ben currently is sitting in second. He's got one of the most impressive rosters in the league. Uh, Peyton Manning has been amazing. LaShawn McCoy figures to become uh, the focal point of the Eagles' offense pretty soon with Vic going down and Foles coming in. Uh, Reggie Wynn and Roddy White have been really solid. Honestly, Ben is my pick to win this division. Um, despite his lack of total points, really, it's just a, it's all been about that uh, weekly low uh, record that he set a couple of weeks back. I mean, he's really just been struggling to get past that. And I mean, if you would have swapped that out for just a regular week, uh, Ben would be right in the thick of things. He'd probably be in first place. So, um, you know, Ben's my pick to win the division. Smith has turned in, uh, you know, what once was a, a scare zone, QB scare zone duo uh, into two pretty solid fantasy quarterbacks, um, especially Carson Palmer's been really good lately. Uh, Calvin Johnson finally found the end zone last week, which I'm sure Smith is happy about. But, you know, still, I think his team is good, not great. Uh, destined for a second, third round place, third place finish uh, out of the playoffs. So, uh, and then finally, what else is there to say about bad luck Billy, really? I mean, you got to give him credit for pulling the trigger on the Aaron Rodgers trade. Uh, you know, losing Ridley uh, really hurts his running back situation. If Bradshaw doesn't heal up over the bye week, Billy has arguably the worst running back core in the league. Um, I don't know. Nonetheless, Breeze and the Saints are kind of figuring things out, so Billy is not likely to fade. I mean, now he's got Breeze and Rodgers, which is, I mean, you know, I know at the beginning of the year people thought uh, Rodgers and Newton would be the greatest duo of all time, but, I mean, really, you know, Rodgers and Breeze, it doesn't get much better than that. Um, especially with both of them kind of figuring things out, shaking off some of the rust from earlier in the year. Um, you know, I would say similar to Smith, I, I don't think Billy has enough depth. I don't think his team is great enough to uh, to win, but obviously he's going to factor into the final decision. So um, sorry for a shorter podcast this week. That's uh, all I got for you. Uh, we didn't have any mailbag questions, and, uh, you know, we're uh, I didn't quite have time to get into the power rankings, but definitely get back into it next week. Um, obviously this is a big weekend. This is sort of the – the last, uh, you know, last weekend in which some of the standings are a little up in the air. So especially after this weekend, we're going to have a much better, clearer uh, idea of where we stand, uh, specifically as it comes to the clown race, which I'm thrilled about. So thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.